Hi, my name is Abel and I am a product designer at JP Morgan Bank. Been working in the banking sector for the past eight years. And when I started off working in the bank, my pay was only about 10,000 Hong Kong dollars. I did compare myself a lot to my peers. They graduate from the best schools. They are super talented and they get a permanent role in the bank with a paycheck twice of mine. So I started off with, with no degree and a six months rolling contract. Just like you, I also felt a lot of self-doubt. I do not know what I was doing. I had no plan. I felt damn lousy and I keep procrastinating. But later did I know I was taking a shortcut and over the course of the next five years, I did manage to earn more than those that I started off with. The company requires you as a junior UX designer to provide your expected salary because you need to understand about how, uh, especially for banks, how do they pay out the salary. So you start off as a junior designer, as an analyst, and as you progress, you become an associate. Between these two ranks, there's a salary cap. And this salary cap determines the maximum amount they can pay you within the rank in itself. So based on your starting ask, they will do a projection. So they will say, okay, let's say you take about three to four years to get promoted. Uh, how much increment can they give you uh, before you max, max out that cap. This is to ensure that you always kind of have some form of career progression uh, in terms of your compensation every year. So that's a very fair manner. The other consideration if you're from HR, uh, distributing salaries to the whole uh, bank, you of course need to ensure that hey, um, this person is not starting off too low or getting too high because it can't be possible that a junior designer gets paid more than somebody who is more experienced. Uh, and of course, it's the good thing is that they ensure that you don't start off um, too low as well. The, the advice that we will give the UX designer about setting, setting the expected salary is to first of all understand what kind of job role they are getting. They need to understand and check whether this is a contract role or a permanent role because there is a very great difference. A contract role has certain budget from the project that determines this contract role. And more often than not, as uh, people starting out, you will start off as a contract role. And this, this has certain benefits as well as certain pitfalls you need to look out for. The contract role is a very good starting point for you to start because it enables you to negotiate your pay every time it's up. But starting out, you need to be also very careful because they are recruiters like middlemen and they can take up to 50% commission of your monthly pay. So every month you get this amount of money, but a recruiter that kind of plays you on a job gets 50% of your pay. That's a lot, uh, which is one of the things that I found out why I was starting off so low. Um, so it's very important for you know whether you're a contract or a perm. But I want to focus the attention more on like a contract job role because there's certain things to look out for. If you're on a permanent role, it's pretty standard. There's not really nothing much to negotiate. The, you follow the procedures, the HR will give you numbers and you should just take it. But a contract role will require you to really negotiate and ask. Uh, one of the first things you need to look out for when you're given a contract role is bonus. And contracts are very tricky in a such a manner where they will say, okay, only if you renew the contract with us, uh, when your contract ends, then we will pay you the bonus. And some of them like to drag it out for one or two years con contract, but 
if you can shorten the contract it might be better let's say a one-year contract and then you say that hey i want my bonus to kind of be averaged out into my pay this is a very important tip because when you get your next pay or next uh, contract it will always be based off your current salary it will not be based off the bonus so because contracts are written in a manner where it's kind of very flexible you should try to ask them to increase your base your base or even if there's any like medical benefits or health care or whatever you say hey you know if i cannot have all these benefits you can just put all these benefits numbers into my base that will be really helpful for me there are many factors such as like you know some of them kind of give you a small uh, amount for transport or i don't know no health benefits if you can kind of ask them to add this into your base and not maybe have all these benefits it's very good for you starting out so one of the things that we will give an advice to when you are going for looking for a job is to try and get at least two competing offers which is much easier said than done but when you have two competing competing offers you kind of know or have more leverage to ask for better pay uh, based off another uh, competing job offer and kind of makes you more valuable as well when putting down your expected salary you will need to kind of have a feel of the market you should ask around um, i used to have a flatmate who is a recruiter so he could kind of help me get all the market numbers like how much is they are paying for this role over there how much they're paying for the role over there and he can help me to find more in you know kind of i would say insider information so Every time they put a job up to the listing, they will have a budget. So they have a range of uh, um, amount that they can pay you. You need to find out what's the budget that they're offering. Because based on this budget, you will know uh, how much they can pay you. And you need to try your best to max out that budget. But first of all, you need to get that number. And I have a flatmate who is a recruiter. So he told me that one of the secrets is if you have a job offer, you try to uh, find another recruiter or agent that's also been contacted to find candidates so that you could try to find out what's the budget. Or you have recruiter fans who can help you find more information. That would be very useful uh, when you're getting expected salary. If you have a friend working there, you can try to find out what's the pay. Uh, go on to Glassdoor, go on to online websites to kind of get a more uh, reasonable amount so that you are not short change. I think one of the very good advice is that the first number that they give to you is, is not always the best. Uh, try to ask for like 10% more, 5% more, uh, because 5% is still one year worth of increment. And I think it's quite fair ask to ask for 5 or 10% more than what they're giving you. It's just a few hundred dollars, so it doesn't really make a difference. The, the advice if you can ask for an expected is not to do a monthly pay like okay I want this amount of mon money a month you try to quote the recruiter or per annum that means you say okay I, I, my expected is this ask for the whole year so per annum and you try to round that number up so you round that number up by rounding that number up it actually makes quite a lot of difference as comparing to like a monthly ask and there's a lot of psychological factors where they start comparing their base to your base and there's a lot of limiting factors when you're starting out you know what's the actual number to start off with my advice to you would be that you need to really ask yourself why you came up with this expected number when i started off with only a ten thousand dollar pay i had no salary expectations and in fact i was really happy that i had a job 
I never compared myself with another peer and I was really never unhappy with my uh, salary even though I was way below average. You need to really reflect and ask yourself, okay, I have this expected salary and this is my ask. And if I don't get, and if you don't get that, that ask, why? Is it because you have a peer who is starting off with you? Is it because you have a peer you know who get this amount and you're not getting it? And that's why you feel frustrated. That's why you feel short change. That's why you feel upset. That's why you start comparing yourself with others. You need to know, is that the real reason? And the second thing the advice would be to also look in terms of more like long term. Uh, you need to look at the company, whether you can really grow in the next three to five years. Um, and think of it more from a long term point of view and not just from a very short term uh, perspective. The expected cannot be stemmed from an ego issue, else you will fall into a trap. Uh, a lot of reasons why people are really good at salary negotiations is because I feel from personal experience was when I had a real need, I needed to negotiate or ask for a better salary because I really needed the money to study for uh part-time I was doing a part-time degree so one of the real valid reasons was I, I, I kind of asked for better salary because I really needed the money to study so good luck and I wish you guys all the best in your um, job hunt